Tony's crazy, right? They come out here from the East Coast, they gotta like put me together like a cheap watch. You know what I'm saying? I'm a used car dealer, all right? Minus the plaid outfit and the and the and, and the polyester and everything. He's from the East Coast. They think they hey, know what's happening, Mark? What's going on? Oh, do what? you know anything about color correction on these? No, I'm not up on that. I was talking to them. Uh, I'm gonna have to work with you guys in a little bit, all right? So, yeah, they were just needing some help on the um, color correction because I guess we're taking it in at 422 and it's supposed to be 421 for. My name is Mark Warman and I own Graveyard Cars. I restore classic Chrysler muscle cars back to the way they were on the day they were built. I do this because I love the cars and I have a passion to see these cars on the road for as long as humanly possible. I'm Tony D'Agostino from Tony's Mopar Parts. I've been supplying Mopar restoration parts to the hobby for the past 30 years. The parts I sell get the cars restored and keep them on the road where they belong. So I can do work on them and stuff like that and make money. Dodge introduced the Super B on the Coronet body in 1968. It was pretty bland and not a lot of styling cues. By 1970, it was over the top. Still today, one of the most talked about designs in automotive history. This 1970 Super B is a 383 Magnum, white interior, purple body, white top, and a white C-stripe. In 1968, Plymouth introduced the Roadrunner. By 1969, it was car of the year. Motor trends. By 1971, Second generation body style came around, which Coke is what bottle. we have here. 1971 Plymouth Roadrunner 383. Uh, automatic on the column bench seat car, Tony Gold. It's, you can just say it how it is, you don't have to. Made in Windsor, Ontario. In 2008, Dodge reintroduced the Challenger and took the retro styling world by storm. However, it all started 38 years earlier with the 1970 model. This is a 70 Challenger RT 440 automatic in factory FC7 Plum Crazy Purple. This time on Graveyard Cars, the East Coast master of Mopar, Tony D'Agostino, is here to help Mark document and decide the fate of three specimens of Mopar muscle. A 1970 Super B 383 Magnum, a 1971 Plymouth Roadrunner 383 and a 1970 Dodge Challenger RT 440 Magnum. The fate of these three cars lies in the hands of Mark and Tony. Are they worthy of a graveyard car's restoration or are they too far gone? And will Tony's no-nonsense approach clash with Mark's dream maker mentality? Stay tuned and find out on this episode of Graveyard Cars. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman. And together we bring dead muscle cars back to life to exactly the way they were on the day they were born. How you doing, big guy? Good, good, good to, to see you, man. Mark. Yeah, hey, good buddy. to see you. Well, this is my wife, Cindy. Yeah, uh, we do hug. Hi, Cindy. Hi, John. It's nice to meet you <laughs> nice face to, to face. Oh, you too. Very beautiful today. Thank you, so do you. Yeah, yeah. You know, the generosity beautiful. of women never ceases to amaze me. Came out to uh, look at some cars with Mark, go over some stuff, and uh, Cindy's never been here before, and she's here too. It's amazing. It's amazing. All these cars, it's just incredible. It's, it's I'm just speechless. What's he do when he gets home? <sighs> Straighten Mark out on a couple of issues he had. You know, he's doing okay. Is it that horse crap? Uh, a little bit of both here and there, uh -huh. but it's all in good fun. Look all at this lot. Fun. Look at Amazing. this lot. A lot of new faces. There's just so many, like, diamonds in the rut there, aren't there? A lot of potential here. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. What's the monochromatic rubber bumper code? I forget, A22? A22, yes, sir. A22 got you the rubber bumpers and the color-keyed mirrors. Right. And it's FE5, only available on FE5, right? You got the red bubble. Would you if you had had a shaker? Yes. I call it the, the bro talk a little bit back and forth as far as, uh, you know, the mines with numbers and things like that. And uh, well, what if the car was an FE5 and it wasn't a rubber bumper car? Would it have been the origin as far as you know? Uh, yes. I think so too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think they're actually uh, related. That guy bought that brand new. That's a real V code. And they both know so much. And it's interesting to hear the different viewpoints 
You can't go wrong no. on a Barracuda. Oh, God. Any body convertible is great. <laughs> Barracuda is even better than Challenger. But in the end, they're pretty much both right. So it's, like I said, they're I, both. I'm right more than Marcus. Uh, most of the time. Not all, but most. I'll give you credit most. The little 1970 Super B, uh, neat little car. Three to three Magnum. It's the original engine. It's the original transmission. Now, I haven't personally verified it, but uh, the owners that sent it out here to have it restored have, okay? Um, the argument, the discussion is, what would Big Tony do? You know, I, I kind of like to get the feedback from people. I respect Tony a lot. I think it's cool because it's got air conditioning, which is a bit of an unusual one in right. muscle cars, yep. especially a Super B, which was, I think, more on the, the muscly end. Wasn't it kind of more like the Roadrunner version of the, the yep. Dodge, yep. right? Meant to go fast. Exactly. He, he definitely is in the business. He, he knows so much, and, and he's well-respected in the Mopar community. The way that we're not kids anymore. You know, when we were right. younger, air conditioning didn't matter. We'd rip it off. Right. You're old and fat and you got high blood pressure, air conditioning's awesome. Air conditioning's a plus. I just like to get the feedback from it. I may not agree with it, but I like to get the feedback and it helps me keep my finger on the pulse of the market and what I should be doing and not doing. Uh, look under here, we've got the original fender tag, the original emission uh, decal, mm -hmm. which I think is kind of cool. There's not a lot on the tag, it's not heavily loaded, but you see it is white interior, white top, C-stripe, and, um, and bench seat, which is kind of unusual. I would have liked to have seen a pair of buckets in it. But at the same time, it's also an automatic on the column, which is kind of a, right. a downer. You know, throughout time, I always like bucket seats because they're cool. Right. But for sitting and riding in the yep, car. I agree. A bench. Again, the old man thing. Yeah. It's, the, a little it's bit nice. older. Uh, anything jump out to you on that engine? I thought that was a pretty darn complete original setup under there. It's a little crusty, it's a little rusty, but. Uh, it's a very original car under the hood. I mean, there's some. Car was built in April. April 2nd, day after Fool's Day. Oh, yeah. Now, that reminds me, I, I do got a question for you, because we both have our own little ways of date coding it. But s sometimes, here's what happens, is you've got a car that's missing the fender tag. A fender tag, or in 70 on up, the door will tell you roughly when the car was made or scheduled to be Schedule made. Schedule production date. But if that tag was gone, how would you know, if you wanted to duplicate your fender tag, duplicate your door, how would you do it? How would you figure out the date? Right. You have to read the car. Uh, by reading the car, I mean, almost you would be amazed at how many things are date coded. The K-frame is date coded. The radiator straps are date coded. The wiper motor you just mentioned date coded. The exhaust manifolds. The uh, engine assembly date mm -hmm. is on the engine. Uh, the voltage regulator, if it was the original, this one's not. But there's hoses. Uh, one of the AC hoses uh, on the, the AC heater hose has a date on it. Um, the inside of the door panels, you take them off on, on, on the, the B bodies, body, and it's stamped with yeah. the date. Uh, there's many things that you can look for a date, and you're looking for the latest date right. that you can find uh, that wasn't a replacement part right. that, you can, that you deem to be original, and you can get a ballpark on that. You're not going to get it to the day, <clears throat> mm -mm. but you're going to get pretty close. But here's what bugs me about that whole thing, too, and, I, and I've just recently had this on our Hemi Roadrunner, right? Let's just take this car, for example. If, the, if we didn't have the tag, and we look at our wiper motor, it's the 54th day of 70. So you know it's after December, right? It's, it's into January. Oh, 54, 70, yeah. right. So, so that's you're February, right? That's right. So, so far we're in late February. Late February on the car. All right. So I would think, well, wiper motor could be assembled a month or two or three, maybe. Correct. Before the car was built. So now all I've really decided is that it's not an early car. It's after February, but was it as late as June? And that's why you keep looking at the parts. You look at the latest date, and that's probably the closest one you're gonna get to the scheduled production date. Right. But like on our Hemi Roadrunner, we had an 049, the 49th day of 69. That was the wiper motor that was original. And the car was built April 22nd. So it was two, two and a half oh, months ahead sure. of time. Yep. And so do you just automatically say, add two months to that? No. What that, would you do next after that? You see, parts, were in bins on the assembly line that right. were grabbed by the assembly line workers and put on. And if sometimes a new supply of parts came in, stock wasn't rotated, it's not milk, it doesn't go bad. Right. So it could sit on that shelf until it goes you, on that the car. could get buried. Yeah. That's why you'll find a later date on, on a later, you know, on a car, I see. and this one will it show up on the car. in the bin and they keep grabbing off the top, that one on the bottom keeps sitting down there. Right. Yeah. So that's why you can't just use one item. You, you gotta find half a dozen, a dozen items or more. Uh, the control arms are dated. The yep, lower control are. arms are dated. The K member is dated also. Right. And and those are I dates. I mentioned that already, though. You said K frame? Oh, you did? I didn't hear you say that. It happens. Are you sure? Okay, cool breeze. You know, so.
much. Why don't you get into this right here then? You could take the sequence number and you could start matching known cars to the sequence number. Right. And it's not perfect, but no. it could get a lot closer than a wiper motor could. So if you had a, a car built in St. Louis and it was 214620, let's say, and the scheduled production date was April 22nd, you're pretty close right there by saying this is, maybe it did set off a week, but it ain't far off. No, it's not. No, it's, it's very it's close. pretty accurate. Very close. Yeah. So anyway, that's, that's cool stuff that you gotta know if you're working on these things. But the overall condition of the car is rough. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's very, very rough. It's got a lot of rust in it. Not abused, but had a bad- Parked. Right. The, worst, the worst kiss of death in the world is parking a car. People don't understand that. They think going out and hot rodding it and burning out and sliding around. That's great. That keeps the car moving. All right. You park them underneath the tree, you set them out in the barn and let the barn collapse on them. Like that's what happened with this one. They rot you know, and I've, they fall apart. I've said it before. I understand why people keep cars because yeah. they have future plans for it or it's sentimental. But if they're not keeping it in good storage, they're ruining the they're car. They're ruining the car. So anybody that's out there that has a car stored, get it I and, agree. and save it in, in a good place. So the real question then at that point is, you know what the end value of this car is. You know about what it costs to have Graveyard Cars restore one. Let's take a look at the car, the condition of it, inventory it mentally as quickly as you can. And I want a gut level response from you as to whether you make that investment in this car or if you sell this car. We've got the original sheet metal inside it, but it's rotten. We've got the original doors, but they're rotten. The floors are rotten. The dash assembly is intact and we have a dash VIN. That's good. Cowl side panels, rotten. Rockers, rotten. Frame rails, rotten. Upper control arms are there and they probably have a great date code on them, but by the time you sample blast them down, they're gonna be a Lay's potato chip. The uppers aren't dated, the lowers are. The lowers are, right. yeah, with the stud. Yeah. yeah, don't try to. The rivet. He's always. Stud, rivet. Does it matter, right? Okay, go ahead. They need no. to know. No. Yeah, please. Here's a date code on yeah, but the, uh, do, please. the receiver dryer. Receiver dryer. Which is 0340. That's the 34th day of 70. So see, a lot of these components are in that range. Mm -hmm. 54th day of 70, 34th day of 70. Right. <clears throat> Which, in this case, we do know the scheduled production date is April 2nd. We do, so yep. We're going back now to parts in February that we seem to be finding on a car that was scheduled to be built right. the first week of uh, April. Right. And so that's two months. That's a good two full months. Another thing that's funny, being that this is so early in the month with the SPD, the 402, you know, Schedule April Schedule production date, SPD. April 2nd, it's not uncommon to find a door sticker with a 370 date on it. Because it, it could March. be right on the, the cusp of the month falling yes. over. But one day, well, where is the original door? It's probably in there. I mean, you're not going to find that on a, on a car that's scheduled April 15th, you know, in the middle of the month. But at the very beginning or very end of the month, it's not uncommon to find a door sticker that jumps ahead or falls behind. This one's three of 70. what I tell you? what I tell oh, you? Oh, Tony D'Agostino! <laughs> Trying to be the man. I mean, it is the man. Okay. We've looked at the car. We've inventoried it. You've given your opinion. You were wrong on a couple of things I pointed out to you. Do you restore this car? Do you not restore this car? What do you do, stall when you kick your guts in, say too bad you lose your car? Think about that. All right, let's take a look at a 1971 Plymouth Roadrunner built in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. That's an R code without being a Hemi. And I know it's nothing to write home about. It's a tawny gold car. Right. But you know how we talk about phone books? When they were back there talking about the Roadrunner, I, I was going off looking at the Challenger. And what well, about we lost this, you, uh, didn't yeah, we? You're like, like my employee, you see something shiny. Yeah, 1970, I love us. It's the one thing that you, <laughs> one thing I know that's attractive to this. Purple. Right. Purple. 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 <laughs> it's purple. purple. This is a cool car, though. This is this is a neat car. This, I, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's a multi-billion dollar car, but it's sure a neat car. So I know the, the you know, the challenge could be a nice, beautiful car when it's done just like the Superbird was, uh, when you got that done. And no, the Superbird wasn't done. Well. You got done by getting rid of it, done. And uh, Looks, and it's a 440 it's automatic on the column, kind of unusual. Uh, they call, I've, heard, I've heard them called cripple sticks. <laughs> you know? That, my friend, is socially unacceptable. I didn't say I said I've heard them call them that. Handy sticks. Yeah, a few months ago, I got rid of the Superbird. Um, wasn't planned, it just sort of happened. Right, it did um, just happen, because I didn't even know about it. So she's, uh, she liked that car. Uh, you like, since you like driving the car. That was honestly the best car. I actually really enjoyed that car so much. But uh, the, the ironic thing about selling that car, I, and I didn't notice until the day I pulled the paperwork out of the envelope to give it to my friend that bought the car, 
I sold it on the exact day that I had bought it, but 16 years later. What options are on the car? Uh, let's see, holy to moly. Um, I, didn't, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. 440 automatic air conditioning. Air conditioning. I would love to have a car like that. I think anybody would like to have a car that is complete, it catches their eye, it's their color, it's their whatever, you're drawn to that vehicle. It's absolutely amazing to see different vehicles at different stages, but this one seems to be more complete and I kind of, like I said, focus more on that one, but I kind of like could, that one a lot. And you can see how it looks now and envision how it'll look when it's done? Oh, beautiful. It'll definitely be beautiful when it's done. Uh, automatic That's on the sweet. column, no six-way seat, striped whoa, elite car. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think it has a six-way seat. This one does? I didn't check. What's the what's the alphanumeric code for it? C. I don't know. Fifty six or something like that. Now, how did you know that by looking through the windshield? You're, you can see the two knobs through the windshield. What are you, the amazing Kreskin? It's yeah, also it the seats sitting higher. You stalking me? And I see speakers. It's got front and rear oh, speakers. Come on, man. Wow. He's a devil. How could you see that's a six-way seat through the windshield? I bought the car and I don't even remember. Well, this is a uh, pretty uh, solid here, hon. That's cool. But 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 yeah, that's 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 cool. I wanted to talk about the. This is purple. This is purple. This is purple. He's really yeah. your brother, isn't he, hon? <laughs> He's really your brother. You I, I love tell Mark. Me. Uh, Mark and I just we made an instant connection. Uh, I reached out to him uh, four years ago, and he already knew me had been bought parts from me. I didn't even realize it. So we've known each other, you know, for a long time, but we really got to know each other, you know, a few years back, and uh, we just hit it off. Uh, we help each other a lot. You know, I'm happy to, I mean, I help him a lot with the cars, some, with parts. You know, I'm happy to do that. You know, I help him with his great restorations and uh, sometimes help him with some technical advice, which I'm happy to do. It's, you know, it's hard to know everything. And with me being parts, I mean, I just know what part fits what car, or what goes where, and sometimes they get cars in that are incomplete and they need help like that. But uh, Mark's a great guy. He, he's great to work with. Um, if we live closer, I guess we'd probably get in trouble. But we're on the opposite ends of the country, so we just do it a couple times a year. <laughs> it's nice to see you guys go back and battle and you love the minds and the numbers. And it's, it's incredible to see how much knowledge these guys have, both of them. But I swear you guys are related. I still think you guys are related. You always well, surprise well, me, so that wouldn't surprise me if you said, oh, by the way, we are really related. Well, Mark, Mark's already called me. You're a brother from another mother. There you go. There yeah, you go. So, so <laughs> it's Mark. Next car up that we want to talk about is our 1971 Roadrunner. This is a 383 uh, column shift automatic. It was built in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. This is one of the used cars that I bought, all right, along with the car next to us and several other. Cause I told you I want to do the used car lot. Right. All right. What were you calling it? What? The used car lot. Graveyard Motors. Graveyard Motors. Graveyard okay. Motors. That's right. right. That's right. This is part of the inventory for Graveyard Motors. It okay. came out of the Midwest. The question is, Tony D'Agostino, Mark Warren, make a decision. Does this car get a Graveyard Cars restoration, number one? And if not, what do we do with the car? All right. Okay. 383 Let's... automatic numbers matching. That's the question. Let's look it over. Okay. All right. Pop the hood. Pretty darn original stuff. Okay, looks like a set of Mr. Gasket chrome valve covers got stuck on it at some point. That's okay. Oh, you're making these stoves, by the way. I want to point that out. And uh, that's the heat riser stove. And the manifolds will be coming out soon and too. You're doing the I'm manifolds. Doing a big, yeah, 7071 big block exhaust One manifolds. Of the hardest things in the world mm. to find anymore. It's it's not. You're just paying royalty for it. And and a lot of times they're not. The, are you doing several day codes or one or yep, two? Yeah, doing a few day codes. Good for you. And uh, they won't be pitted. The new heat risers. Good for you. They'll be on. Original air cleaner, 71. What's the difference between a 70 and a 71 dual snorkel air cleaner? Because a lot of people don't know. 71 only. For some reason, Chrysler decided to put the nipple for some the valve kind of cover a... breather yep. here to run it over to the passenger side valve cover. Now, this is missing it on this car. Right. But typically, 1970, they had it back here. The nipple, right. right? I mean, you only need a hose that long. That's right. Here, you need a four foot hose to get over there. But Something interesting. Why not though. just remake the same 70 hair cleaner in 71? I, I don't know. <laughs> who, who knows? Who Maybe knows it had their something to do with, with uh, uh, for the hot air coming up on this side maybe they were thinking that oh maybe for the cold run condition possibly but one thing that's really interesting see this is a 71 air cleaner yep. obviously by that right see there's a bump here yeah on that air horn on the on right on this snorkel there's near which uh, uh, there's a bump but it's also the reason why the bump is here 
is because that's where oh, that nipple would go. because that could have gone on either right. one of those places. They just punched the hole. So they made the same top the and just punched a hole on that gotcha. one and put the nipple in it. Okay. Now in 72, they went back to the conventional way, right. just having the nipple back there, but they left this bump on the snorkel because it doesn't matter. So a 70 air cleaner, you will not have this hose and you will not have that bump. Correct. 71, you have this and you have the bump. 72, you don't have this, but you still have the bump. That's correct. Yep, that's a quick way to tell. All right, this has the original distributor, which has the retarding mechanism in it. Right. What's the purpose of the retarding mechanism? This is Steph telling us because he knows parts. He's obsessed with parts. He's insane about parts. What's the reason for the retarding? 1970, Chrysler uh, started uh, succumbing to the emissions deal. Okay. okay? And, uh, so one way how to decrease your emissions upon idle is to retard the timing. Okay. But the car doesn't run as good when it's retarded. Right. So what this solenoid does on idle, it would retard the timing to fool the sniffers so they had a lower emissions. Gotcha. But as soon as you came off idle, it would go back to regular vacuum advance. And that's what and, and those are hard to it's find. Like a smog, if you think of what a smog pump did, not that Chrysler's had them this year, right. but a smog pump only pumps air into the exhaust to make the air coming out not as bad, but it's right. not really reducing the emissions. They're just trying to dilute it. You're right, That's you're all diluting it, but it's yeah. the same amount. It's yeah. Uh, looking at the overall condition, though, and we'll get doing that in a minute, you can see this car's got an extensive amount of rust. You can also see it's as pure as the driven snow. This is a very original car. This car is an answering machine for anybody putting together a 71 Roadrunner. What's really weird about that radiator it's, right there? Take a good look it's, at it. Oh yeah, it's a 26 inch radiator and it's obviously below 343959. And that's the same number used on a Hemi in a six pack with a 26 inch. And 71 with right. 26 inch extra heavy cooling, but you could have got a 446 pack in 71 with a 22 inch. If it was an automatic. If it was an automatic, I had a 71 charger that was that way. Go ahead. But the, uh, it, this is a real 26 inch radiator car, not somebody just bolted in because the opening in the radiator the support supports is a wide yep. opening. But it's so what's the method behind is this? It, is a 383 automatic. 383 automatic, obviously no AC. Right. And uh, could some, it have something to do with Windsor, Ontario? It, it, I mean, did they, they, I don't know. I'm just I, asking. I know in the past, and I know for 71, there is a 383 22 inch radiator. I know that because Absolutely. I, I have them in stock. I don't know it's why this car got a 26 inch. I don't know if there's a heavy duty package, a trailer tow package. Maybe that would have you know gotten you that. There's nothing on that tag that would tell me that. It, it does call out for the 26. It calls out the 26. Right. But, but like you say, nothing like a towing package or something like that, which probably would have got a cooler with it, wouldn't it? Or no? Would it I would think so. I would think yeah, something like that, like the Hemi's cool. got that. Okay, look at over here on our firewall. Yeah. We got big problems with this car. It's got, and it's got rust. The gentleman that sold it to me told me the exact same thing. He says, listen, that's a rusty car. It's an original car, but it's a rusty car. All right, so I bought it figuring, okay, worst case scenario, very, very worst case scenario. It's got a lot of parts on it, but it is a real life 71 Roadrunner. And so it's a numbers car too. I have a hard time parting out a car like that. No. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's walk around, let's okay. keep going. We just... So you got your L31 turn signal indicators, and if it had an air grabber, where would they be located? It'd be on the fender if it had an on air grabber. On the 71 to 74 B bodies, right? Uh, air grabber was 71 and two. Oh, air grabber wasn't available in 73, right? right. Okay, a lot of rot down here in the fenders. It's a 14 inch wheel rally car. And they don't make these fenders. Look at the side markers. Yeah. Remember when there was a time when you're getting pretty good money for those before they started remaking them? And you wanna hear something funny about those? Yeah. The side marker looks the same. This is one of the rare cars that a two door fender is different than a four door fender. Right, not all and, the cars were that way. Right, and the side marker, uh, Except they never built a four-door Roadrunner. He's referring to a satellite body, which is what it's built on. Is a different shape. It has a different contour to it. Yeah. One's flat and one's curved. Yep. They look very similar, but on the back, it'll say for R23 or for R43. Oh, really? Oh, did that's know that. how you yeah. know for sure. Two-door, four-door. Right. I'll be darned. VIN number's intact. We saw the fender tag. Bench seat, automatic on the column, pretty plain hamburger entry Yeah, level pretty barren. Tack though, it's got the but tack. But it does have the N85 tack, and check out the rear speaker. So I don't know, that had to be an option as part of a radio group is my guess. Uh, you can get that on an AM radio, rear, and rear defrost, I say. Which, oh, see, I didn't even notice the rear defrost. I could, okay. see, that, I could see that for up north in Canada. Yeah, <laughs> production. right, right. But look at the rot in the bottoms of the quarter panels, doors are rotten. That's all rough. the way through. It's a really, really rough car. I love that a lot of the ornamentation. Did you happen to notice? Go look at the grill. Okay. 
sure you already know, but. Oh, the bird head? It's still there. That is so cool. That is the most awesome thing right there. I am Roadrunner, hear me roar, look you at know, that. You uh, know, Chrysler made for the dealerships, uh, for a salesman, they had cufflinks and tie clips just like that. Oh, yeah. you probably got some? Yes. Well, of course you do. <laughs> You know, it's cool on the back. It's got the blackout around the tail lights. It does, and it's still on there, yeah. And yeah. I think all your RM cars in 71 had that. I don't think that was part of a decor package. Oh. I, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And I think the GTX got it in 71, oh. too. Right, but they had a chrome bezel on the tail Right, light. right. And in 72, of course, you couldn't get a GTX all by itself. It was a Roadrunner with GTX back. You know, you know what's funny about the, all day long. the tail lights and the bumper? That's a one-year-only bumper. That is a one-year-only bumper. The 72 tail lights are much larger. Yep. Look the same, but they're much larger. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the car, if you look again, the same similar rust that we have on the other side. Look at this here. You want to know about locations? Yeah. There's a well, great hard to argue with location. It's been painted, and the decal is not in the right. Uh, I don't believe the decal is in the right place. You're trying to. I mean, look at the trunk. The, the decal is above the keyhole and should be over on the passenger side. Yes, it should. Yes, it so, should. And, and this decal is supposed to be in in front in the of the center, road. I think, isn't it? Or in no, front, right in front of the road runner, right? Yeah, because it's running and it has the runner yes. left after. But it's so. weird though, in 72, they poured it down over this way. Well, by the, the bottom... way, just out of curiosity, do you know what roofs this fits? That's the same roof on all the B body, 71 to 74. 71 to 4. Yep. So is the windshield. This windshield, I believe, windshield even, is too. even goes up to Cordoba's. Oh, into 75, 76? Yeah. Oh, wow. The next platform. Okay, last car, 1970 JS23U0B car. Uh, e. LA. Los Angeles. LA, yeah, getting the kit on that one. Is it worth restoring? This is a graveyard, motors, new acquisition. Is it worth restoring or do we sell it as is? Well, let's take a look at the car. I can see right away that it's not rusty like the other cars. No, I, it, honest, Tony, it's a nice. This is a really nice car. California. I don't know why they put, yeah, California car. California car, that's a good. Yep, yep. Uh, from what I can tell, original sheet metal on it. I was looking at the hood the other day, you see no crush ribs, right? While it's still a different color, it's at least a 70. And, and this is an early car, I believe? What's the? How would you know that? By the VIN number, it looked like it was an early VIN. You're, you're the devil. That weird, yeah, well, that weird December, LA font. December, oh. yeah, that weird LA font. December 4th. Okay, so it's early so, for the hood because the yeah. hood didn't, well, it wasn't technically supposed to come in until January 1st. They started putting the crush zones. That's when the hood started getting made with the crush zones, but I have a February original paint car that still doesn't have the crush zones. So they weren't getting put on right. They, they hadn't gotten installed. Not yet. religiously, it was a rolling change too, right? Of course, yeah. Take a good, take a good look underneath this thing. Original air cleaner, and we just talked about the difference between a 70 and a 71 and a 72 and 3. Right, well here we got the correct 70 without the bump. Without the that's, bump, right. That's the only year that the dual snorkel was like that without without the bump It's a there. true H51 car, so you got air conditioning. It's good colors, plum crazy. And just take a really good look under here. You got the fender tag, which is a lot of times is gone. I did check the engine, I did check the transmission when I first got it in. They are all numbers. The rest of the stuff underneath here looks correct. Tie bar numbers, cal numbers. The radiator's been changed. Radiator has been changed. It's a 27, yeah. It should be, uh, mm -hmm. let's see, 440 with air conditioning, 299861, I think. Yes. Yeah. Same as the uh, same as the 70 Super Big we just looked at. But you know what's nice about this? And Are, are you done? <laughs> you know what's nice about this? And you know this better than me from all the e-bodies. They're always bubbly and rusty and Oh, they are. Look they're at true. this. Look at that. But that's that California, I'm telling you, it's dry. Yeah, that's beautiful. This is a gorgeous car. And see the the cows are blacked out. See right. the black overspray yep, coming over here? Yeah, there it is right there. there. Nice. It's very soft on that edge. A lot of people get crazy and they have like a hard line here. It wasn't a hard line. I think they, I think a, a gun probably came across it like that and whatever fell over the edge fell over the edge. I don't think it was that intentional. Yep. And then they dropped that in 71, right? Yeah. They didn't black out the cowls in 71. And these are the correct original fenders without the They are the without outs. the notch. And the notch doesn't auto automatically mean it's a 71. It could have also been a service part. Right. Well, really, um, they weren't done for the 71 model year. They were, that was a, a change in production for the 72, the, the cutouts for a 72 grill. Oh, uh, for the header panel. The side for the header 71. panel. Um, no, but this part of the fender, because the fender is a few different parts, they started using they started these on the later 71 I fenders. I got you. Take a look, <clears throat> even even at this, <coughs> without any hands on this thing at all, the original 15.7 wheels. Wow. Look at that. Nice. What's the date code on those? Is that 812? 
812, August, uh, August, yes, August 12th of 69, yes. is that right? Yes, it is. Look at the floors, look at that dash. AM8 track, very cool. Again, of course, all Challenger RTs are rally dashes. Yeah, Six-way seat. If I could buy these every single day, because, you know, good business practice not to share or anything. Let's just say Daddy bought it right, right? That's the perfect used car. The perfect, perfect used car. Yeah. No or Dual minimal exhaust rot. tips for a California car, because it could have just easily have, yeah. been, have not been. You but know? you know what's odd? It does have the California emissions tube on the right side in a fender well. So it shouldn't have had the tips, right? Or I guess, I don't know if that's an absolute, I don't yeah. know. Looks like all the original tinted glasses in it. Might even be the original tinted windshield. I would say that it is. Yeah, AC cars would have tinted glass. Yep, absolutely standard. 70 Challenger only dash pad with the, with the hard stitching on it. Yep. And, and the emblem embossed on the dash. Yep. Look at the condition of the seat, like the back seat. I think the front one may have had some work on it, but. Oh yeah, look at that. But that back one's just really nice. Yeah, it's, it's pretty it's nice. Sunburnt from the back, but. Right. All the bows, the look at the headliner boards that are usually warped and wet and garbage. See, here's an example of a car that was stored properly, though. Right. And that's the difference. That that car could have looked as nice as this exactly. if it was kept better. Yep. And that's the shame. The of only it. detriment the, the rusty cars have that we've looked at is they were Midwest cars. So even if they were stored properly, the bottoms of it probably after this many years of that salt setting in there would have had. Not if they were stored properly. Well, you mean washed and cleaned before they were put yeah, in? Yeah, because that's set for a number of years. That didn't happen from driving. No, that, that was left outside. Well, I think all this rot down here isn't from setting. I think it right. was put there and the car was never washed again. Where normally you'd wash a car if these yeah. cars just sat and they got you. But obviously the roof problems happen from setting. Right, that's a setter, yeah. For a used car, if tens, the perfect used car, the perfect for buy. A used car, a core car, right. A core, core car to restored. rebuild and to restore, it's up there. Yeah. It's up there. If it was a Hemi or six pack, it'd of be course, better. Of course, yeah. But uh, as far as if you do the rating of condition, the condition's pretty up there for a car to restore. It's, yep. it's pretty good for that. Yep. Uh, 1995, last on the road in California, according to the sticker. You'd give it a 10, wouldn't you? For, for a core car, 440 automatic. What for more, condition How much wise. better would it be? Right. You'd pay for whatever's better. That's the thing. Uh, the next uh, step up from here is Survivor, and you're going to pay for that Survivor. A stick would be the only thing better, but then yeah, you'd lose stick. the air conditioning. You'd lose the so air conditioning. That's right. There's a you know, give and take on yep. that. Yep. What a gem. Because 444 barrels, or 440s weren't, four speeds weren't available with the air conditioning. Nope. 444 barrel, 446 barrel, with or without an automatic or a stick. Yeah, wouldn't stick. Matter. Yeah, 440 stick. And, and Hemi, the same thing, couldn't get H51. So it's the kind of stuff we do. Nice. No, I loved it. When I when when I got the call, I thought that's the car right there. That's a that's a perfect one. He took two or three pictures of it, sent him the money, sent Mike down and grabbed it. And you can see why. Yeah. Beautiful. Car. Not hot rotted, not dinked around. I mean original wheels. Is this car warrant the graveyard car's restoration? With the assessments complete, Mark and Tony weigh in with their verdicts. Are these cars worth the cost of a full graveyard car's restoration? Do you restore this car? Do you not restore this car? The pluses to the car, it's pretty original, good color, nice options. Numbers, numbers, numbers. But it's a rusty car. Uh, it's, it's hard to get parts for. It's only a 383. Um, so I, that, my God, that, that you, was hard. You, 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 you know, aren't, don't discount, it's, numbers don't discount, right? You know, Plum crazy. Right. Uh, um, great color combinations. Dollars and cents wise. Dollars and cents wise. Dollars and cents wise. Certainly. It wouldn't make sense. It's not as desirable as a 440, so it doesn't command the same cash, right? Right, a six pack or a Hemi, we'd mm -hmm. be having a different conversation. Okay, let me stop you there because I know how you are. I know, I know what's pumping inside that chest of yours and it ain't much of a heart. So what are you saying? Your East Coast, you crush everything you don't like. What are you doing? You're popping this old girl in the head? Is that what you're doing? You killed me? I, I wouldn't restore it if it was mine. Okay. I would, I would rather just find a done one if I liked this kind of but, car. But, 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 but what would you do with this one then? I would let. <laughs> no, go ahead. Yeah, well, we're all big. We're all I wouldn't really. Up. It's too cool to be scrapped, but it it couldn't go to a restoration shop to get that, it couldn't absorb that cost. You got a 1970 Roadrunner convertible, correct? Mm-hmm. You've had it since high school? Yeah. 
If I were to own that car right now and I were to put it on a, say, eBay, and represent it honestly and straightforward, how much money do you believe I would get for that car? True story. I know the number in my mind. It's, it's in the 50s. Yep. Pretty well in the 50s. I was going to put nice 50 grand on that car. This lady, this sweet gal who sent this car to Graveyard Cars to have a sprinkle of pixie dust on it and bring it back to life, not unlike Lazarus from the tomb, right? I know you're not a biblical guy. Another question for you. How much would you take for it right now? It's not for sale. You could offer me No, any no, I'll write you 100 grand. 150? Fortunately, it doesn't matter. Her daddy bought her this car for her 16th birthday, and she's had it her entire life. It is what it is, right? Some people don't give a crap, crush the car, get rid of it. Yeah. But, but you just said it right there yourself. I mean, no, that car's not for sale, right? Nope. You can't put a price on it. So is she justified in spending the money it took when it's an emotional attachment? Yep, absolutely. There. What do you do, stall when you kick her guts in, say too bad you lose your car? No, there, there's a point there. All right, think about that. Well, that. That one hurt you a little. That one stung, didn't it? That was a zinger. Yeah. That was, was a zinger because yeah, it had some you teeth. Got, you got me. There's something to that. Got no heart in there. You know me, I zip that thing up. <clears throat> yeah, nothing in there, ice cube. Uh, next car up that we want to talk about is our 1971 Roadrunner. This is a 383 uh, column shift automatic. It was built in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Numbers match. It is a numbers car. Yeah. It is. Tawny gold, which is, you could fancy it up by saying tawny gold, but it's still brown. Yeah, it's a brown it, metallic. It's a brown, brown, you know. Which, when it is fresh, it is a lot nicer and a lot more acceptable than it is in that state. It's very original, complete. Mm -hmm. Not much change nope, from the not way hot it started rotted. life, nope. right? Nope, not hot rotted. And a lot of stuff there. The downside, of course, to the stuff that is there is it's in pretty bad shape. It's pretty rusty, <clears throat> pretty rusty. Does Graveyard Motors go out of its way to try to sell this as a restored car? Let the owner make up the mind. Who do you think is going to buy this car and why? I don't think, again, it's, it's a 383 car no matter what you do. Yep. Obviously, not a convertible being available, so right. that's out of the picture. So it's a 3D3 column automatic Roadrunner. My, my personal thought was I bought the car right. It's a great used car. It's something that can sit on the car lot. I don't know how hard I, I, I don't think I'd push anybody to restore the car and spend the money that it costs to do one here. Here. Right. Here, here. I would push them to bring it home if they have the ability to do it. I'm kind of with you almost on that. Well, it's a uh, strong point, sir. It is, an, it is original Roadrunner. Yep. It is numbers matching. Yep. The weak points are the excessive rust yeah. and the lack of parts availability. So due to those items, I don't think it's a candidate for a GYC restoration, but I think it should be restored. And I think if somebody could buy the car that has the skills and has time, and they could do a lot of the work themselves or go to a local body shop and just have them do the work that they can't do maybe and, and do it as a slow backyard, you know, family, father, son type project without having to go to one of the big shops. Here's the thing again, your cold-blooded, heartless e e killing machine. You don't care. Oh, the car? Yeah, dream stomper. The car should get done. You walk out with great out. big waffle stompers and you stomp people's dreams, man. You're a dream buster, you know? I'm a dream maker. I'm a dream weaver. They wrote that song about me in the 70s. You know, oh, dream weaver. The backyard guy could tear it apart. Mm -hmm. The back, I mean, I say backyard, not to be disparaging. Sure. The guy's working at home out of his garage with a little shop right. set up. He could disassemble the car. He can inventory it. He can go through his engine and his drivetrain. But at some point, it's got to go to the shop. And that's where I'm afraid he's going to spend some money. Well, it can go to a shop to do the metal repair. And then he could take it from there. My point is, if somebody calls me up and says, hey, I've got, I'm, when I was in high school, I had a 1971 Roadrunner. I'd love to have another one. Well, tell me about it. Tell me about your car. Oh man, what was that weird color, that root beer brown? Hmm, like burnt orange? No, there was another name for it. Ronnie, Ronnie, uh, Tawny, Tawny Gold? Yeah, yeah, it was Tawny Gold. 383 automatic. Hmm, I happen to have one very much like that right now. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I can do this conversation both. I can play both characters. Anyway, the point is if he really had that car and it was a real life Tawny Gold car, I would probably support him in his decision because it's one of the opportunities to relive his youth. Mm -hmm. So again, the sentimental thing, right? Right. And if he didn't have the ability to do it at home, I might discount it a little bit to help him make his dreams come true. Because again, I'm what? Go ahead and shoot heart. it right out. The heart. The, the heart. Yeah, boom, heart. boom, Dreamweaver, right? Okay, you say probably home build, right? sell as is. Yeah, if you can get it running, that's a plus. 
You, Green in your heart, and say you're an idiot, slap him upside the head with a, one of those great big Philly sandwiches you eat. No, you got it wrong. I, I suggested that the regular guy restore the car, not come to a high dollar shop. He could do most of the work himself. You might have to sub out some of it. Sure. But it, yeah. that way it could be a home project. That, that's, that's a lot of heart in that. So I'll pose one last question to you. And this is just, again, I like your feedback on stuff, all right? Mm -hmm. That car's completely restored. Would you drive the car or I, would you just really, turn you off? The color just isn't my cup of tea. As you're far as you're I a bubblegum guy. You know. You want poppy bubblegum bright colors. And stuff, the right? nice thing about the car is since yeah. the value is somewhat limited, if you change the color to a red, yellow, or purple. Check like that pop music stuff. Like pop you music may, by M. You may, you may lose some people that would be interested in the car Happy if you songs. want to sell it, but it also may open the door Magic to a lot songs. of other people. That doesn't care if it's yeah. not if it's Partridge the family style. color matching. Right. Yeah, like I it. think I love you. And what am I so if not like that? Not just give me an example of oh, whatever, you bug eyed. Can we go on to the last car? Sure. That would be great. Is this car warrant the graveyard car's restoration? 440 Magnum, 375 horsepower, H51 car, right? Mink. Mink condition, right? Eh. It, it's <laughs> there. You know now. You this is your calling, the used car guy. You need a big rocking chair. Yep. The on Jerry's the side cherries. Of the Hop off the big chair. What can I get for you? Get me some you, polyester out. You know I'm not going to give you a, a whole line. <laughs> <laughs> right. Automatic on the column. Very rare. Very unusual. Yeah, that's not the really the best thing though to have automatic on the column. No, it's not the best thing. You know, slapstick, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four no. speed. You know. OK. <laughs> so you say build it. Yeah. That it's in number. No, that... no body panel replacement. I mean, that saves a bunch there. It's a no excuses car. Right. It just isn't a super car. It isn't a Hemi, and it no, isn't a six pack. It's, it's, but it's a pretty dad gum nice one. I mean, it's not a 383. It's not a 340. No, it's a 440, right, right. which honestly, for a car to own and drive, for we know the six pack sexy. Long. Yeah, sexy. We know the Hemi sexy. Yep. But you know this is going to stay in tune <laughs> yeah. forever. Check it out. Rally Dash. It's standard on RTs. Yeah, you see it. I spoon fed him that one. All right. Six way seat, is that standard? No. 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 How about rust? Is that standard? Because it ain't got none. I guess it got it, rust delete. <laughs> what, what's the option? Right, code right. For that? It did a little R68. bit. R68. It is a little bit. Well, I don't know. Why yeah. The only thing I was missing when I bought that Challenger was a gun and a mask. <laughs> Stole it. You know what I'm saying? Stamp the back and deposit it. That's money in the bank. <laughs> huh? You'd have to agree. It's an amazing car. It's a great used car project. It's okay. It's a... well, all I'm saying is I think that that car could support an awful healthy restoration. Well, <laughs> you know, it depends on the customer and how healthy the cost is, you know? Yeah. What are you doing? It's, you know, it's. I see it coming a mile away. It's, it's That's a, the thing about it. He did this once to me before. I, go ahead, tell him. It's a good car. You know, I'm not saying it's, it's a, a bad car. car. And you know, ago, it's a good car now. You okay. know, I sold the Superbird. Now, nah, here we go. And you know, yeah. Cindy was disappointed because she enjoyed the car. Like the train you hear coming around the bend. You can hear the whistle. You know and what's coming. It's well, getting louder. Well, you think you know. Yeah. And you put the car I, I down. There's only one reason you put the car I down. Was, I was. And I was just tossing an idea around that maybe I would buy that car from you. I'm buried in it. Well, the only thing I was missing when I bought that Challenger was a gun and a mask. <laughs> I stole it. it it's <laughs> there. You know what I'm saying? Stamp the back and deposit it. That's money in the bank. The Challenger. Yeah. Because a little while ago you it. got a great deal on it, making faces, jumping up and down, and huh? It's relative, you, you man. You got it right. It's, it's like, is the is the glass half full? You know, it's like that. Well, it Because I can show you a pie chart where. No, it wasn't in the middle. It was like a good deal yeah, you got. Yeah, now I'm upset. You're down. in it right. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's got, you know, it's got its problems. <laughs> it's, it's an original. Yeah, you can't even do it with a straight face. Well, it's. it's Numbers up the crap shack. 375 or 440 Magnum, automatic on the column. Very desirable. It doesn't have all the extra molding Nobody packages. It's a slapstick. That's where you, you put a bench seat in that thing, and that's it. And you got your chick there, man. What's wrong with you? That's the, that's cool stuff, man. That's a deal closing car. Even you could get the action in that car. They you know call. What I'm they call. You know what they call the bench seat? Hmm. 
the high I know what I called it. The high option. Ah, uh, that's a shame. What's that mean? What the hell is that? Do we got to bleep that? Yeah. Son of a... <laughs> Just in case your short-term memory is as foggy as Royals, here's what Tony and Mark concluded. The 1970 Super B 383 Magnum didn't win over Tony on cost versus rarity. But when Mark told him the owner's father gave her the car when she was 16, he agreed that the cost of the restoration was worth every penny. A miracle happened with the 1971 Plymouth Roadrunner 383, when Mark and Tony both agreed that this car would not be worth the cost of a professional restoration but instead serve as the perfect vehicle for a Mopar fan's backyard resto project. And wonders never cease in the graveyard. Mark and Tony agreed again on the 1970 Dodge Challenger RT 440 Magnum. With this zero rust California car, restoration is a no brainer. In addition, the combination of a big block, automatic transmission, and air conditioning makes this a very desirable driver. So desirable that Tony offered to buy the car from Mark for his wife, Cindy. But will Tony's offer be accepted by Mark, the dream maker, or cut down by the Iceman? Okay. Between you and me, he's nuts, right? I see him coming a mile away, all right? He, we're out back, his eyes are great big like an owl. As soon as he spotted that car, he went berserk. I'm not stupid. I know what he's doing. That's why I played it up and, and, and got him into the game out there. You know, this ain't my first rodeo. See, you might pull that stuff back there in Delaware and the East Coast, but you're in Oregon, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you? Yeah. yeah. Tony, what can I say, brother? Thank you for coming out. Always great to see you, man. Good. Yeah. Always. You need to get out more. You... Oh, hi. <laughs> it's great Well, I get sold you. out quick. Well, yeah, you did. <laughs> Well, I'm, gonna, I'm always going to do that. You need to buy a house out here and travel back and forth. Yes, You're sir. rich. You're rich. <laughs> Why? Why do you want this car? I think, well, I know Cindy likes it. She likes purple. She likes Challengers. It's going to perform very similar to the Superbird. Cindy is awful sweet. You know. Do it. Yeah. I'd love to see you guys out here. We need yeah, help. That's good time. That I always enjoy it. I'm going to need a lot of help. It's always too short when I'm out here. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Time flies. Yeah, that's good. You're talking about a $200,000 car done. No, no, you don't have any Hemi challenges here. <laughs> no, I don't. You know. I have a mink condition, irreplaceable mink. mink. Yeah, my friend Andy Crandall used to call it mink. I'd say it's mint. He'd go, no, it's mink. All right. You also should say Papa Willie. I go, Wheelie. Yeah, nah, it's a Willie. The Willie around here is totally, you know, boop, <laughs> get in trouble with that. Well, thanks again for everything. Have a safe trip back. Thank you. And, Thank you so uh, much. It's always great to see Talk you. Talk to you nice soon. Nice to see you Take face care. to face, darling. Thank you, you too. All right. Dreammaker.